How many guns need to be seized? How much vitriol do we have to see of honk honk, which is an acronym for Hail Hitler? The working classes of the West have already won their class struggle, though not with the help of the laptop liberals, for these self-appointed soy boys of progress have, by now, lost all moral authority. The common man has elevated himself. He faced the saboteurs who tried to kick him down every sport of society's ladder. We have arrived in the age of high-tech despots who may freeze our bank accounts for dissenting or resisting. The role of the common man must now be redefined, for as a German veteran of World War I, Ernst Jünger, who turned to philosophy, wrote, Heroes are born of men in whom something uncorrupted still lives. To men of morals, matters shall become simple again. And to morality we shall descend when we are confronted, as today, with a mentally ill, disturbed urban leadership that prefers to evolve a free humanity into an unthinking colony of human insects. They dream of cities full of sterile workers, preferably women, as is the case among the ants, the bees and the wasps. These insect species evolved by robbing working class females of any reproductive rights but without robbing them of a will to labor for the queen. Among our kind, the movement that wants to see more women in men's professions has nothing to do with equality but with making men obsolete. By the time enough women have been tricked to assume the roles of guardians, builders and soldiers, they shall no longer be permitted to birth children of their own. Artificial wombs are no longer a fantasy. Mainstream advertising has been priming society for years to normalize machines that incubate children. Artificial wombs may even be installed inside men's bodies. 
marketeers play on women's insecurities. Not every woman can get pregnant or give birth without complications. A single woman looking to get inseminated from the sperm bank, for example, may not have the luxury of a husband who provides for her when she needs time off. So wouldn't it be fairer to give all women equal access to a birthing facility and then to ban natural birth altogether? Machines will grow the fetus so mothers, quote unquote, can do office work. Men may do the cooking and cleaning until robots come online to replace them. And who says that women may have their own eggs fertilized? Let us briefly reflect upon what feminism has done for women. First, feminism robbed women of their children, dumping them in public schools where the state could indoctrinate them. And then, feminism robbed women of their households by demanding they serve an employer, or perhaps the state. And lastly, feminism is about to rob women of motherhood. This, then, is the vision of the future that our so-called ruling elites have bought into. They see themselves as a fertile upper caste whose elite women shall produce all of society's eggs and whose men shall fertilize them. It is the extreme narcissist's dream. Produce human ant colonies full of millions and millions of people who all look like their parents, the colony's queen and her suitors. Selective abortions may eventually remove boys altogether. New Zealand has already passed a law making it legal for mothers to remove a fetus from her womb on the sole ground that her unborn child is of the male sex. No further questions asked. Once the new urban infrastructure is ready to accommodate a single-sex society, sex-selective abortions may remove males from existence apart from a handful of toy boys to service the elite's reproductive females. If, for some reason, men might remain necessary, or if males can't be gotten rid of, such as among the termites, their physical appearance may be altered to look just like women, so that there is no visual distinction left between the sterile worker males or females. This is clearly the purpose of the transgenderism cult that mainstream media have placed their bets on. Once you can no longer see the difference between men and women, no one will notice it that the men have disappeared. Against this dystopian vision of the future, the common man stands alone before a cast of technocratic despots. Aristotle was correct to assert that the power of Oriental-style despots such as Francis Macron or Canada's Trudeau depends on the consent of the majority rather than their fear. The masses have become complacent and servile. Indeed, we have seen the evidence thereof. A majority of the West's electorates voluntarily went along with the restrictions of the past two years. Each new mandate, each removal of their freedoms made them feel safer, and every trampling of their once sacred rights made them ask to be trampled more. According to Aristotle, men of the colder north possessed the spirit but not the skill to lead, whereas the Asiatics had the skill but lacked the spirit. Within his ancient Greek society, every Greek man was considered free and capable of leadership, both able to rule and be ruled. Perhaps the philosopher wasn't too far off from the truth, although modern Greek people certainly don't seem to live up to their name and have succumbed to the same slavish attitudes toward their government as everyone else. There is only one way forward, then, and it starts by redefining the role of the common man in the modern age, for he alone may acquire both the spirit and the skill to overthrow his despots. The common man must sink to the depths of his society's morality and find there a weapon to overthrow the elite. Refusal. Men of the West shall learn to refuse to obey and consent any longer. Already full of spirit, we shall acquire the skill and the intelligence to rule ourselves, and we shall find these abilities already lying dormant in our own hearts.